Hello folks, it's time for a video that we've not done for quite some time, and that is a 40k rant. A bit of rantage is on its way to you over the next 20 to 30 minutes. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. Please head on down there to support the channel and help us grow some more as we try to reach our target of 20,000 subscribers. Also, if you're going to get any models very, very, very soon for your modelling needs towards the summer, please head on down to Composite Games, the down below. A lovely bunch of people, and if you use the promo code Northern Exile at checkout, you get yourself 5% off your order on your checkout, on your order. Also helps the channel too. So, my topic for today is why do Games Workshop not allow games in store anymore? I started writing this like last night and then earlier on today when I had a little break from work and it sort of turned into an essay. So please bear with me, we're going to get there. But about three months ago, we asked the question on the channel of should Games Workshop allow their games in stores? Well, these days, we now know for a fact that at least in the UK, they do not. So I thought... After the third Hobby Nightmare covering the fact that gaming is being cut out of Games Workshop stores as if it was a cancerous tumour, I thought that I would revisit the subject and this time not ask should Games Workshop have games in stores, but why? Why have Games Workshop come to this pass and made this decision? To me, it seems odd as far as company policies go. Games Workshop are a company built on two main pillars. Number one, the quality of their miniatures. Their mission statement literally reads, and I quote, We want to make the greatest miniatures in the world, and we want to continue doing this forever. Unquote. This has always been the modus operandi of the company. Sell models, be best in class. I think that yes, they have had missteps, you know. Hello, fine cast. Space Marine Centurions, you know who you are. But by and large, the company do succeed at having the greatest looking model range in the world. I'm at a point now, after sampling models from many 3D printers and countless other companies, that anybody saying Games Workshop's models are terrible to me is either blind or dying of cope because they will find any excuse to hate Games Workshop and refuse to give them any kind of win. They sell, by and large, the best models in the world. That's just where we are, mold lines removed from the conversation, of course. Number two, the games they produce to make use of those models. Here is the sticking point. I think gaming was only ever meant to be something that helped fulfill the second part of Games Workshop's mission statement. We want to continue doing this forever, quote unquote. Models lose their luster, and yes, there are a lot of people out there who will collect and collect, me among them, without ever really touching the gaming part of the hobby for long periods of time at a time, right? The vast majority of people, however, likely need something to keep them invested once they have the models in hand. A popular war game allows models to have a much longer shelf life in the minds of its audience with the average hobbyist and draws in a whole new demographic of people. So, if it fits this well into the Games Workshop mission statement, why is it going away? A lot of you will expect me to, to harp on now about gaming strangling stores. I will get into that a little bit later on, that is part of this video, but it is not my main argument of why Games Workshop has nuked gaming from stores, at least in the UK. Soon, that will be rolled out across the world. You know that's coming, right? In the US, Canada, you know, Australia, you know, you guys, brace yourselves. There will come a time over the next year or two when gaming no longer happens in your Games Workshop stores if it hasn't happened already, all right? Because the trends of Games Workshop go UK first, and then slowly what's happened here is rolled out to the rest of the world. Look at any major decision Games Workshop have taken towards the business model, and that's what happens. Rolled out here first, and then it starts to come in everywhere else. So, why have they taken it away? Well, the main reason, in my opinion is the sheer organisation of the competitive gaming scene returning to bite us all in the arse. 
With the relative explosion of competitive video gaming in the mid-2000s to mid-2010s and the rise of streaming platforms like Twitch and YouTube, the zeitgeist of gaming, no matter whether it was tabletop or electronic, was shifting to a more competitive mindset. I really do feel that this was one of, if not the main reasons for, gaming falling away from the Games Workshop umbrella of stores. When I was working for the company, Many there expressed a real love for fluffy games, where stories are told by a set of friends over a tabletop. For those of you that don't know, fluffy games are generally not competitive. The games of War of 40,000 where you get together with your friends over a couple of beers and you, you tell a story on the tabletop with your models, right? You, you try and win the game, but it's secondary to having your models do cool shit on the tabletop, right? Well, this is the kind of gaming... Games Workshop always actually wanted. This is it. There is a good reason why the most beloved of Warhammer 40,000 rulebooks have extensive guides for doing your own campaigns and setting up narrative games and even events. Every, every game you play is framed in those older rulebooks like 3rd edition as telling a story on the tabletop. Go to your old rulebooks if you don't believe me and I'll try to find a mention any mention of a tournament competitively or a league competitively if it is there it is in a single reference reference here or there or compared to the entire chapters given over to narrative style gaming all right that is where we are the very game itself is framed in those rule books as a narrative thing to do between friends akin to a wargaming type of macro role playing which is ironic as Proto D&D started as a war game called Chainmail back in the day. Anyway, this was the game Games Workshop wanted to push and wanted to sell, right? When the dynamic changed, when the world changed around Warhammer, and competitive gaming became the thing everybody wanted to do, Games Workshop, instead of embracing this begrudgingly, went along with the crowd, but only under severe duress. They didn't want a competitive scene in Warhammer 40k. They wanted a beer and pretzels game. Alright? They wanted an excuse to sell their models. Because their mission statement is, sell the best models in the world and continue doing it forever. The game helps with that. The game is not the be-all and end-all. I'm sorry to tell you guys, if you're a big gamer and you don't like painting, you're into your Games Workshop, probably don't consider you a, a full-time hobbyist. That's going to suck, I know. But I'm telling you now. Games Workshop has people, the people who work there. If all you do is play the games and you don't do any, like, painting or, or, or sculpting or anything like that, Games Workshop don't really see you as a real hobbyist. Alrighty? That's just how it is. I, I do, but they don't. Alright? By their own mission statement, they don't. Nowhere in their mission statement is gaming mentioned. Alright? Take it from somebody who's gauged the opinion of the company from the ground on the ground floor, how people spoke about it in there. I'll go on to that right now. Even in my time at the company, there was a general contempt for competitive 40k players. I remember my own manager telling me he'd be tempted to ban anybody from his store who said that they were running some sort of list. And he blankly told a customer friend of mine, Mikey, hello Mikey, hope you're all doing well, that he was not a real hobbyist because, and I quote, you play games, you don't put time into your models, unquote. This was not an isolated opinion. It's just that my manager was so unsackable and entrenched, he could say what he wanted with no filter to regular customers. He said the quiet bit out loud, all the time. The reason why you can't play games at Games Workshop is that the company is now doing the same with its actions. It's saying the quiet bit out loud. You have taken the hobby to a place where most games, even casual ones, are played for the act of winning rather than telling a story. And to me, there's nothing particularly wrong with that because you can still go and find yourself a narrative game. I'm just telling you why I think things have changed in stores in the UK. This is very quickly becoming the new norm, and even though we all had games that were rather competitive back in the day, in 3rd edition and so forth, right? The vast majority of games back then revolved around blowing things up 
and having some cool things happen on the tabletop with your friends. Today, you'll be hard pressed to find such a game, and each game you play will revolve heavily around objectives, point scoring, stratagem gotchas, and other things aside from actually telling a tabletop story, right? This is not to say competitive gaming is bad. Far from it. It is a vital part to any game like this to have the competitive side to drive the balance of the game. The issue is that when you balance your game only for competitive play and treat the average non-tournament goer as an afterthought, you supercharge the hobby into the competitive sphere at the cost of almost everything else. Again, this is not the game Games Workshop wanted to sell you. They've been forced to do so, and you can tell that they do it half-heartedly because they're so fucking bad at it. Every addition of 40k that is made to the competitive sphere, I would say from 6th edition onwards, right, has been a fucking disaster in terms of balance, okay? So they've decided not to play ball, right? They release, a, they release the rules and go, fuck it, there you go. It's a balanced quote-unquote war game. The gaming space has moved away from something that they want to promote. So, whilst they are happy for you to play it, of course, they won't want it played in their stores. You've probably noticed I've staved away from the gaming will strangle your store argument, and that's because it's reductive and a complete fallacy. Gaming done properly, done, sorry, gaming done poorly, not properly, poorly, will cripple your store. That's how I did it, and it did cripple my store, right? But linking your in-store games to larger narrative events and stories is a surefire way to get buy-in from your customer base and to attract new hobbyists to the more long-form and sustainable part of the hobby. It's lore, it's narrative appeal, and the imagination fuel that it brings, right? Those are the long-form parts of the hobby. It's lore, it's narrative appeal, and the way it fuels your imagination. If you can tap somebody into those three things, they're going to be in the hobby for decades. If they're into the game, their shelf life in the hobby is about two to three years. Let's be honest, right? Look at your friends groups who play the hobby. The more competitive guys will only stick around for a little while. By and large, right? This is what keeps people in the hobby for the most part. Games Workshop sees this and leans into it, discouraging anything else from happening in their stores. I'd like to cut back to our previous point and give competitive players some credit here, though. If they are good at one thing, it's organisation. For a long time, customers and fans were generally clamouring for Games Workshop to make the jump and organise themselves into tournament givers. To become the FIFA of sorts of the wargaming space. You know, FIFA runs world football, but a lot of people are saying Games Workshop should run the competitive gaming scene. This was always a bad idea in my eyes, and to be fair, Games Workshop apparently felt the same way. Instead, the players themselves formed their own international tournament circuit, highly regulated and prized, that has gone on to be wildly popular across the world. This is something Games Workshop could not have done better if they had tried, even with all the resources at their disposal. There is a strange consequence to this, though. Games Workshop no longer needs to engage with the competitive space. So they don't. Remember my point from earlier? Games Workshop do not see the competitive side of the hobby as the hobby. They see it as an offshoot, and a small one at that. The game they want to sell is narrative and long form in nature. The competitive space is reactionary and revolves around a day to day meta. That's not something Games Workshop want, that's why they make such a piss poor result of actually writing the game rules these days, right? Here is the last bit of proof I have that Games Workshop genuinely do not want gaming in stores anymore because it is not, it is not the game that they want to sell. When they have engaged with the competitive space scene, right? All you guys like the competitive games. When they have engaged with you, what has it gotten them? It's gotten them bile, vitriol, and general rending of garments. Negative comments. Don't get me wrong. Games Workshop are not good game designers anymore. But that's only because 
That's only because they don't want to design the game that you want to play. Alright? The rules back in the day weren't perfect, and I'll get into them in a minute. But yeah, they were broken code. I, I don't, I'll get into that in a minute. But in a narrative-based game like Old School Warhammer 40,000, 3rd edition and the like, they never really had to be good game designers. If this was a beer and pretzel style of war game, when people came together to tell stories and have fun, which it was back in the day, was there ever really a need for a meta, quote-unquote? No. Meta was not a thing that was discussed back in the day by the old Greybeards and myself, right? Sure, armies back then were broken at times. Hello, Grey Knights. But it was more a figure of fun and shame for playing that codex than something that actively ruins somebody's day like it does these days. Don't get me wrong, the Greybeards of that time were made of far sterner stuff in my opinion than the millennial, terrible beard growing, meme factories of Reddit these days, and so they were more able to just roll with the punches when Games Workshop threw them their way. This does not excuse, though, the fact that the general 40k population of the time, by and large, saw the rules as guidelines, as an avenue for having fun, right? The competitive scene was the niche back in 3rd edition. Narrative was king, and narrative was not even a word used to describe casual games of 40k. Why? Because that kind of game simply was Warhammer 40,000, and the competitive games were the exception to the rule back then. By far and large, these days those two things have swapped around. The competitive scene is now the norm, Playing competitive games of 40k with your friends is now seen as the norm. Narrative stuff, we're off in a corner on our own with all the other neck, all the other uh, necky and grey beards, right? So, yes, people moaned about the Grey Knights Codex and Eldar in general at times, but in general, Games Workshop didn't need to balance the game of Warhammer 40,000. It just had to be good enough to get everybody on the table and playing because the competitive scene was an afterthought back then. It wasn't a real thing that everybody got into. Unlike today, where every major town seems to have an international tournament qualifier. Back then, you just rolled some dice with a few mates. The, the competitive scene was there, but it wasn't as all-encompassing as it is today. Again, it was not this wonderful and innocent time back then, where no competitiveness happened. Of course you were trying to win, but the entire gaming side of the hobby was not built around competitive play. Games Workshop does not want hot top-end competitive play to be the norm. It has never wanted this. Look at its mission statement. Games Workshop and gaming has morphed to become something they frankly don't want. And so, they have removed it from their stores. And again, going back to the more to the argument that I was talking about before when we were mentioning um, gaming strangling stores, right? Let's get back to that argu argument from before. I don't agree that that's what happens, mainly because if you use gaming in the right way in your stores and you market your fan base, you market your customer base to enjoy those those narrative games and those, and those, um, and those events that you're putting on, that is when you get a fantastic store full of fantastic people. That is when you market and you build a really good set of, of core customers, right? That's gaming. And that's why gaming should be allowed in the store. What can happen if you let gaming in your store and you don't do it properly is your store can become a fucking youth club where people just get together to play really competitive games of 40k without ever actually buying anything in your store. Because people who like the competitive form of 40k, by and large, min-max... And what do they like to min-max? Well, everything, including their own purchases. If you're min-maxing your purchases on your wallet, you don't buy models from Games Workshop. It's the most expensive way to buy models, and the most inconvenient at times too, right? What if they don't have what you want on the shelf? Do you know what I mean? So, why would they buy it from your store? So gaming can and will strangle your store if you don't do it in the right way. But what people tend to misunderstand is is that if you do it in the right way, it can also make your store too. The only people who told me that gaming blanketly ruins your store, right, are either executives who have no idea what it's like being on the ground floor of a Games Workshop store, right? Those guys at Games Workshop, I'd have that argument with those guys. And people who've never worked for Games Workshop a day in their fucking lives. 
I've heard that argument from them as well because they don't see the nuance, they don't see the black and white nature of it, the great, the, the melding in grey nature in between, in between the two black and white things, right? They don't get it at all. Gaming should be allowed in store, absolutely. You just need to market it and you need to push it in the right way. Even competitive games should be allowed in store, but they should be factored into a wider event that's going on that encourages people to spend money. That's what you should be doing. Not only is it making you money in the store, but it's a great advertisement for people coming in off the street and getting involved in the hobby. If I'm a dad, and I am a dad, and I, and I walk in and I sit with my daughter and she wants to get into 40k and I see a load of people in the store getting really agitated, aggressive, or, you know, trying to work out what calculations they're going to be doing for their stratagems on a table that's really quiet... That's not a good game of 40k in my eyes. That's a terrible game of 40k. Even if you're playing it by the letter of the law, right? Whereas another table where they're getting a few rules wrong, but they're having fun and blowing shit up, that's the game I want my daughter to play. It just is what it is. This is why competitive nature games can be in stores, but you need to make sure that they're done in the right spirit. And Games Workshop can't be asked policing that. And what have they done? Instead, they've gotten rid of gaming from the stores because they can't be arsed policing it. And you know what, guys? For once, I can't really blame them. I, can't, I just can't. Like, just, could you be asked If you want your stores just to sell models and get people into the hobby and you want to avoid all this meta nonsense, could you be bothered? I couldn't, right? You need to redesign. They would need to redesign their entire training process all of it to get this across to, the, to their own people dude i wouldn't do it and i can see why they've made the decision is it the right decision i don't think so but i can't blame them for taking it is what i'm saying right i think you can do games in store i myself if i was in charge of games workshop i would put the effort in to make sure gaming was happening in the store in the right way okay We've, we've seen that Games Workshop can do it. They've done worldwide campaigns before, right? You can do it in the right way and foster a really good, really amazing, positive, forward-thinking community in your Games Workshop store. You can do it. You just need to do it in the most positive you know, way going forward. I.e., there needs to be narrative games in store that can be competitive at times. That's fine. Bringing a tournament mindset into a store not the thing we want that will kill your store off all right because those people in general will not buy in your store some of them will most of them won't all right so i can see why they've made the decision i i can sympathize with the decision that they've made which is why this isn't a games workshop hate video i try not to do those anyone who's been on the channel for a long time will know i know a lot of people who still work for the company and i love all of them and i wish them all the best but what i can't do right is sit back and say this was a right decision to make i don't think it was and i think there were ways to have gaming in stores without nuking the entire thing and throwing the baby out with the bath water they've gone down one certain section now so maybe when you're told by games workshop that you can't do gaming in stores anymore you might think back to this video and kind of not be happy with the decision but kind of know why they've made it because the game you created, guys, and you did it. They didn't want you to be to be competitive and to do tournaments all the time. The game you created in the wider zeitgeist of gaming, of 40k, the competitive, you know, tournament-based game you created over the past 10 to 15 years, is not the game Games Workshop want to sell in their stores. And as such, they don't, and they don't allow you to play it either. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love you a long time. I will speak to you on Thursday. There won't be a video tomorrow, or there might be. It depends how, how, how uh, busy I am in work. If there is, fantastic. If not, I will see you on Thursday for some more Hobby Nightmares. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll speak to you later. Have a good one. Bye now.